And welcome back to Sideline to Sideline. I'm your host, Raider Will, and I am here with my boy, Douglas Sheffield, a.k.a. Raider Homer. How are you today, my brother? I'm doing well, brother. I'm doing well. And Raider Nation, be sure to follow us on social media and subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow us here on YouTube at Section 105 and follow Will on YouTube at Silver and Black Radio Podcast. And you can find us on X at Homer Raider and at SB Radio Podcast. And before we get going on this episode, I want to congratulate Bo Jackson for getting into the Kansas City Royals Hall of Fame. All right, guys. So congratulations, Bo Jackson. And now Raider Nation is representing in Kansas City, baby, at the baseball stadium. And in today's episode, guys, what we're going to do is break down OTA and mini camp defensive recap videos. Then we're going to go break down our secondary as the primary communicators. And now let's get into some press conference videos. All right, guys. So for our first video, we're going to have our DC talking about how crucial the continuity has been as we have nine out of 11 returning starters and how we have key play, key play callers coming back and making a big difference on defense. First great year, year in your system. Uh, I think you bring back nine of 11 starters and one new one is Christian Wilkins. There's a lot of continuity here uh, from what you guys built last year. Do you feel that where the starting point is this year is a little bit different than where it's been your first few years? Each season is so different. And the players, it's great to have some of the leadership back and the signal callers. That's a, that's a positive in terms of the relationship that I have with them and them being an extension of me out there on the field. But does it feel different? Slightly, yes. But we know what we have ahead of us, and I'm excited about that. It's right there, Raider Nation. He dropped the word continuity, man. That is huge. And we'll get into that throughout the episode. You know, Patrick Graham is such a great and huge part of this team, man. We must re-sign him. He's coming up at the, to the end of his contract, man. And it, even though we're coming into this year with him, it's got me a little worried. We talked about extensions last uh, episode, last couple episodes. I would like to see him extended as well. The guy is a great leader of men on the field, man, and he's good at getting what he needs from his players to help this team win. So, Patrick Graham, thank you for all you do for Raider Nation, and let's get him signed. No, absolutely, man. And now that he's entering year three of his contract, which is a vital year, you can tell the consistency, the continuity, the guys being together and growing together is definitely coming into effect. And now we have Trayvon Merrick feeling more confident in the personnel packages and the calls and the adjustments and being a leader into the secondary. So let's get into that, baby. Patrick Graham's system, uh, how much difference does that make for you coming from you having to change over uh, early in your career? Uh, just the consistency, you know, in what we do, um, our game plan, <laughs> uh, what we try to get done, our approach to things, it's just, it's more consistent. So, you know, having that consistency, um, you know, it, it helps us a big, you know, big, big amount, just, you know, our calls and, and how we operate, you know, just knowing the system, knowing our players, so. There it is, the theme of the show, consistency. Trayvon Morig is set to be even greater this year for us. He is a great free safety, man. He's a ball hawk, man. He sets the QB up in a lot of different ways, man. Uh, and we're going to look at that here in these press conference breakdown. So I'm looking forward to his leadership on this field. How about you, Will? No, absolutely, man. I can't wait to see that growth and development. As you know, Patrick Graham said, he has a lot of guys that are filling into leadership roles, a lot of guys coming in and stepping up. And this is really a big year for Trayvon Merrick as it is a contract year as well. So I can't wait to see him grow and develop. But talking about leadership, talking about continuity and consistency, man, Max Crosby and that group of guys has really take, been able to take it to that next level because of the consistency, because of having the same staff, because of having the same coaches. And let's get into Max taking it to the next level on leadership, baby. I like to be a young player in this league. Your defensive line has you, John, Adam, and Christian to help a Tyree and a Byron and some young guys. What does it mean for those young guys to have the maturity and mentorship 
that you four offer? I think it's super important. You know, uh, I've talked about it many times before, but when I first came in the league, I didn't have, you know, an Aaron Donald in my room or a guy, you know, like a, a you know, a guy that's done it at the highest level. Um, and I seek, you know, that leadership and seek, you know, what are they doing? What's the routine? Things like that. So when you got guys like myself and Christian and Jank, you know, dudes have done it for multiple, multiple years. Um, as a young guy, that's like your dream. You know, you want to come in and just soak up as much information as you possibly can. So uh, that's what we do. You know, Christian's working mainly with the D tackles because they, you know, we're a little bit separate during like individual kind of stuff. So um, he's done a great job with them. And, you know, I'm leading my group, you know, with the ends. And then we all come together and we do all our meetings together and everything. So it's just a collaborative, you know, group. It's not like, no, this is my way or whatever. It's just like we're all learning from each other. And that's what, you know, makes our group re uh, really special. So right here, you know, he's talking about leadership and what he didn't have when he first got here. And it's obvious how important it is to have that kind of role model, a person to look up to. Sure, he had Unique Ngakwe for a little while, but he was only there for a little bit. Max has had to learn the hard way. You know what I mean? And then, and now, not only does he know how to play the game very well at a high level, now he knows how to be a leader, you know, off the field, during practice, during the game. And people will listen. We're talking about, you know, the secondary coaches and how they are players here in a little bit. Uh, they were players and, and how they helped this team come up faster and learn faster. Well, it's the same thing with Max Crosby. When he's on the field helping these guys, man, they're going to learn even faster, even faster. And so, you know, the thing is with Max and that kind of leadership, adding Christian Wilkins, you know, that's only going to make our defensive line that much better, which in turn helps the secondary because when you, when you have people breathing down your neck, you're going to get rid of that ball. And we got ball hawks like Jack Jones and Trayvon Morrig back there that are going to feast this year. No, absolutely, man. And I mean, like, when we look at the continuity and consistency that now the Raiders have had for the past three years on defense, which we keep talking about, now leaders are able to set the standard and make players become elite. And the way that players become elite is by paying attention to the details, all the small things that a rookie might not see that a guy that's a senior guy might be able to see during the real play, during real time, because they have all that experience, because they have all those reps. Now, you said a key word there. Now that Max Crosby has another guy that can line up next to him in Christian Wilkins, and now Christian Wilkins is also taking over that leadership position and looking at all the small details and helping all our young guys develop. So let's get into that. Little things, though, that separates people sometimes from being elite and being average in the field. How do you kind of take those things that you know that can help the intricacies of the game that can help mentor some of the younger players? Yeah, it's just that, like, knowing that myself, um, you know, I just try to bring that, you know, making sure guys are focusing on those things throughout the course of practice, you know, because sometimes when it's hot out here and, you know, you get caught up in the heat of the battle, you know, you might, you know, you might not be aware of certain situations or certain details or whatever. So, you know, just kind of bringing the guys all in, hey, this is focus right here, this is the situation, whatever, you know what I mean, and, and just building on those things. You just heard Wilkins talk about how he can help the team, right, the defensive line in game, in practice. Well, we're going to get into how the free safeties can help our cornerbacks do the same thing because our biggest hole, again, is at cornerback number two. Uh, and my theory, though, is that Hobbs will start out at cornerback number two, but in the nickel, they're going to move him into the third cornerback position, the nickel slot, the nickel position, and where he will play the majority of the season. But then Bennett will be able to move in on the outside, as we have footage showing he's capable of doing, with the help of Hobbs underneath and Morig or Epps over the top. So I'm excited to see how this defense comes together. We have the leadership both, you know, in the trenches and in the backfield. So this is setting up to be an exciting season on defense. No, absolutely, man. And, you know, each level of defense helps out each other. If you're really bad on the backside, usually you want to have a really good pass rush. So that way they help out each other. If you have a really bad pass rush, et cetera, et cetera. But in our defense, man, it's really, really good all across the board, guys. And now we really got to look at, like you said, we have to upgrade that corner position because they're saying that's the chink in our armor. Now, we don't know that. We definitely have players on the roster right now that definitely can fill that position. But a lot of people are saying that we might have a player like Stephon Gilmore, who's not on the roster, 
come in and fill that position. So it should be an interesting thing. But now let's get into the guys that we have on our roster right now. And Jack Jones is a guy that is definitely at the top of our list. And here we have him talking about how important continuity, time, and chemistry are on defense, baby. And 10 starters from last year. Yeah. A lot of the backups, too. Um, and then also Patrick Graham going into his third year. How important is that continuity for, for this defense? Uh, it matter. Team chemistry matter. And you, and you built that with time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you, don't, you don't get team chemistry in a day or – or anything fast, you know, you got it. That, that happens over years, weeks, months, however long it may take, but it definitely takes time. Chemistry, that's a huge part of any team, and this team has it through consistency. And you're adding someone like Jack Jones, man, it's only going to get better overall. You know, Jack Jones is that elite type of player. He just needed somebody that believed in him. And as you can hear, like uh, AP talk about him on Keyshawn Johnson's podcast, that, you know, people were questioning his – behavior i guess but ap looked at the tape did his due diligence and went and pounded on the table as he said and when you got a guy like ap pounding on the table for you and you have experience with him and he knows how to use you man he's only going to be a huge threat and hopefully a lockdown cornerback no absolutely man and you said that relationship with ap is definitely key you know you watch a kid from high school he's been a leader in the locker room since high school he's been growing he's been developing and now entering his basically third year into the scene in the NFL, his junior season, he's ready to take on that leadership. He's ready to develop. He's ready to help other guys. And now he's ready to step into that role and become a leader himself. So let's get into how Jack Jones is already a man that's a leader. You know, league, you know, you kind of have to mold yourself in the corner you are now, but now you're going to a situation where instead of being a young player, you're now a leader of this team. How have you adjusted to that? Um... The feel for it different. I mean, to be honest with you, uh, I always looked at myself as a leader, you know, from, from high school all the way up. I felt like, you know, I had some guy, some player looking up to me, take, I'm taking under my wing. So, you know, as far as me stepping into the role, it's not, it's, not that, it's not that big for me. It's just, it's regular. It's not even a big thing for him to be a leader, right? That's why AP knew that he had a potential lockdown cornerback. And this guy's got Raider written all over him, man. He's boisterous, he's loud, he's in your face, and he's capable of the big play. You know, last year, we'll look at these couple of plays coming up. He made some huge plays, uh, huge plays you know, within a, sh a short span that really changed the whole dynamic of the team and the defense. And even though there, are, there is some question as whether he can be consistent all year long, uh, I believe he will be consistent all year long, and that's why AP was pounding on the table for him. No, absolutely, man. Jack Jones has definitely come in and made his mark on this team. In the short time span, he definitely came in and has impressed a lot of Raider Nation. I can't wait to get a larger sample size from this guy. And I'm telling you right now, with all this chemistry, continuity, everything that we got going on in that Raiders locker room, now Patrick Graham has the ability to have some fun on that backside as a coach you're able to draw up some crazy stuff and let players have fun. So let's see how Patrick Graham is able to add wrinkles to our defense this year. How much when, because of all the changes last year, midseason, how much do you get to change your defense this year? Do you, do you I mean, obviously it worked really well, but you're known as a tinkerer. <laughs> I enjoy being in the lab and the, with the players we have who have high football IQ, um, that embrace those challenges of the tinkering, I guess. Uh, it's, it's definitely fun for me. And each, again, it goes back to each year's different. And if you try to stay the same, you know, people will catch up and, you know, then we'll get passed by. So there's definitely a little tinkering going on. We'll see, you know, what, what sticks and we'll put, you know, the best uh, version of our defense out there, you know, at the beginning of the season and hopefully it keeps improving. The tinkerer. Man, look, that is exciting. And that's kind of what we're going to do in this episode is tinker with this defense. Uh, this guy, as you heard, man, he's intelligent. And he's looking for intelligent players. He wants to be able to move people around. He wants people to know what they're supposed to do. He wants people leading on the field, off the field. Man, this guy is the type of coach that we need. Uh, still, I'm going to bang on the table. You know, I want to keep Patrick Graham, man. He's got a lot of talent, man. And it's scary to think about this defense without him. Absolutely, man. Patrick Graham is 
you know what? He was God's gift to Raider Nation, man. When uh, Josh McDaniels came, this guy came in the package. And I'm going to tell you what, Raider Nation, at first we, we all doubted him. We all had some doubts. Now he has buckled in and made this Raiders defense a dream team defense. And he's got them playing at a high level. And he's building relationships with these players. And they're feeding off of that. So in any defense, guys, what we have to do is give you guys a breakdown. And today, what we're going to do is get into our no-fly zone breakdown, baby. And we're going to start today with our safeties, baby. All right, guys, we got Trayvon Morgan, and Marcus Epp are the big-time play callers this year for our secondary in Patrick Graham's defense. And we need to stay locked in as both of them are in contract years. And in today's offense, we know that the passing game is huge. And let's see how these two primary communicators are going to lead the way for the Raiders defense, baby. Traditionally, we kind of think of linebackers as, you know, that, that communicator on defense, the guy wearing the green dot and whatnot. How, how have safeties sort of stepped more into that role in recent years? Do you think that's kind of a result of the passing game being? 100%. I think the passing game being such a significant part of our game. And, you know, the safeties have always been um, – kind of primary communicators in a lot of the defenses that I've experienced because they have the most depth. Um, they're the ones that are going to be able to understand the adjustments and certain communications and certain defenses um, that lead to different adjustments or just making their teammates aware of the possibility of certain things that they're going to do offensively and putting themselves and their teammates in positions to be able to go make plays. And so um, it's always one of those things that we always talk about just to try to continue to develop, uh, to put our guys in positions to make plays. So right there, you hear him talking about communication. And communication is key in anything, man. And we've got the guys in the backfield that can provide legit, smart, experienced communication. You know, and the young guys can listen and learn and come up faster. They can learn faster, become better faster, right? So you in these upcoming clips, you'll see Epps and you will see Moreg communicating a lot. And I think that that is what's going to help our defense continue to play well, even though we have a question mark at cornerback too. No, absolutely, man. And I mean, like, I think you hit the nail on the head there, Doug. You said, hey, communication and knowledge. And knowledge is something that you can only get through experience and from your coaches. And let's talk about a little bit about what Coach Alexander's bringing to that safeties room. He's bringing a lot of experience. He's bringing a lot of knowledge. He's bringing a lot of things that he's able to teach, and he's able to translate that to his players. And let's see what Trayvon Merrick has to say on Coach Alexander. Coach Alexander, what's been your impressions of him so far in the first couple of matches? Uh, just his intelligence, man. Like I said a couple of days ago, uh, his above the neck football, just what he brings to the table, and and uh, the details. You know, just the interest, the intricacies of. The, the defense and, and not, you know, something that not a lot of people see, you know, on the video, um, just the little details like that. So him coming in here helps the defense tremendously just with his knowledge and, um, you know, just how he comes into the into work every day. There you go. Keyword knowledge. This secondary feels confident in this guy. Like I said in earlier in the episode, you know, they appreciate learning from coaches that have experience in the game. They know they can learn from these guys and they don't question these guys at all. And Trayvon Morg, I think, is going to be poised to have a great year under Coach Alexander. You know, I'm excited about his enthusiasm. And I think one of the important things to point out right there is that even though he said he didn't have expectations, they still exceeded any non-expectations that he had. This cornerback room is ready to and poised to become an elite defensive backs room. Absolutely. And it's just like you said, man, I can't wait what Trayvon Merrick has in store this year. I mean, I really see him as the safety that comes down in the box, helps out on the run. And right now what we're going to do is get into a play where Trayvon Merrick makes a monster stop. And all right, guys, here we got Trayvon Merrick Coming down on a blitz, we got banjo coverage up top with Jacory and Bennett and Hobbs. And on the bottom, you have Marcus Epps 
picking up any tight end that comes loosely on this Raiders blitz. Here you got Trayvon Merrick making a great read coming downhill. He lines up the running back in the hole, squares up and makes a great tackle. Alright guys, here we got the backside angle or the all 22 view. You see the running back sees that backside hole open. Trayvon Merrick comes in, fills the hole, gets low, and makes a great tackle, preventing a Bills touchdown. So right there, you see the importance of Merrick in the red zone, man. He read run straight. As soon as the ball was snapped, he read run, and he went at it, and he made a great stop, broke down, made the tackle. He's a sure tackler. He's a ball hawk. He's a heady guy. You can hear him in the interviews. He knows what's expected of him, and he's more than capable with that football IQ to produce on the field. No, absolutely, Doug. And I think this is where Trayvon Merrick excels, is where he comes down in the box and makes big-time plays. He's a great tackle. Now, a lot of people go, hey, Trayvon Merrick, what we want to do is get the ball. We want to get pick sixes. We want to get picks. So let's look at the way that Trayvon Merrick makes big-time plays in the second day. And all right, guys, here we got Trayvon Merrick playing center field and Marcus Epps playing the low hole in our cover one with Jacorian Bennett up top playing man-on-man, -man, corner number two playing man-on-man, -man, Hobbs playing man-on-man, -man, and Roger Teamer playing man-on-man -man with the tight end. And now you see the motion, the ball is snapped. Roger Trayvon Merrick plays center field. Watching the quarterback. Quarterback rolls out to his right because of pressure. Now he has pressure in his face. He identifies a receiver, makes a throw. But Trayvon Merrick says, oh no. Goes there, makes a big time interception. And now the Raiders are going the other way, baby. Here we got the all 22 view. You got Trayvon Merrick watching the quarterback. You see him raise his leg there to bring in that motion. Ball snapped. Quarterback is pressure. He rolls out to his right, has pressure in his face from Spillane. Makes a throw. You got Trayvon Merrick playing center field. Makes a pick. And it's a Raiders first down. All right, you can see that we're playing man in that play with a single high safety over the top, as, and Morig is a single high safety. Uh, you know, the Raiders are, playing, are known for playing man forever, so expect them to come back with that because Patrick Graham loves it. You know, and the cornerbacks that we're talking about are going to be more than capable and expect Morig to continue to make plays like this, man. It's a special thing to get a safety that can make a difference in the secondary, man. Uh, as you've been hearing that they're important communicators. They're the general. They're like the second green dot, let's say. And in a lot of instances, they are the first green dot. You know what I mean? So uh, having more egg, this being able to be a ball hawk for the Raiders, man, is going to be something that's a huge key for this defense this year. No, absolutely, brother. And I mean, like you said, a lot of stuff right there that is right on the head. Guys, if you guys have ever played defense, if you guys have ever played football, okay, um, in my defense, we have two different communicators, a guy that controls the box and a guy that controls the coverage, okay? Our primary communicator is always going to be our linebackers inside the box. In the secondary, it's always going to be the safety because he has the deepest view of the field. He can see everything. He can make adjustments. And those are big-time adjustments that are made by safeties on the fly. And that's why it's so important that they know their playbook, that they know what they're doing. And I really do think Trayvon Merrick is coming into his own. And I'll be like, the man had a broken hand this year, and he was still making big-time plays. And let's get into another one that he makes against Mac Jones. And all right, guys, here we got the main reason we feel comfortable with Marcus Epps and Trayvon Merrick. Guys, they are able to communicate with anybody on the field. 
We got corner one, corner two, and corner three all playing their respective coverages and highlights. And now we're going to have the quarterback snap the ball. He feels pressure. He flushes out to his right. Trayvon Merrick identifies the receiver and the quarterback identifies the open receiver. The quarterback keeps rolling out right. He gets pressure in his face. He makes a bad throw on the run. You see Trayvon Merrick is at the right place at the right time. Make it a big time play for our Raiders, baby. And here we got the R22 view with Trayvon Merrick highlighted. Ball snapped. Quarterback feels the pressure. He's flushed right. Identifies the open receiver. Makes a bad overthrow off the back foot. And Trayvon Merrick is there to make the big time play for our Raiders on that errant overthrow. Right place at the right time, man. That's intelligence. That's knowledge. That's leadership, right? They understand what's going on on the field. They understand what they're supposed to be doing in coverage. These safeties, man, are going to be key in this secondary. Right there, all those cornerbacks, one through three, are no longer on this team, and that's what we're talking about. I imagine Jack Jones and QB1. I imagine Hobbs in the slot. And then I imagine Jacorian Bennett on the bottom part of your screen in QB, uh, CB2. So you can basically plug and play these guys anywhere when you have safety help over the top like this. You're absolutely correct, man. With two leaders in the secondary that are able to communicate, able to put guys in the right spot, able to help them out and capitalize off guys' mistakes, our defense is definitely set up for a banging year in the secondary, even if we have a bunch of young guys. Now, guys, like we said, those were the key plays as to why we think he makes pick sixes look easy. But now let's look at Trayvon Merrick making one more stop in the box, baby. And here we got Trayvon Merrick highlighted in the box as he drops back to changes in the formation due to motion. Then you have Marcus Epps, who's out there, you see him covering his space. You see corner two, who will come in as the motion and he'll cut lock up that slot receiver. And then as Doug has said, guys, look at Nate Hobbs up top, playing that number two corner against the Minnesota Vikings. Let's roll the play. You see the motion come across. You see them bump back out. You see Trayvon Merrick immediately reads the pulling guard, guys. This is something that is crucial for any safety to have. He reads the play, fills the hole, meets Alexander Madison in the hole, and wraps him up for a five yard game. Now here we have the all 22 view. Guys, as we said, Trayvon Merrick starts in the box. Let's start it. You see the motion come across as the motion comes across. He drops back out of the box. Just in case it's a pass, you see the running back. Reads the pull as he's coming back to that right side. Comes in the hole. You see Trayvon Merrick barreling down in the hole, making a great read. Filling the hole, bringing the pain, and wrapping him up for a minimal game. Again, man, you can see that he has a prowess in the box, man. Not only is this guy a ball hawk, he's a run stopper as well, man. I expect him to make the Pro Bowl this year. He's been in this defense. He's been with this coach. He's getting the help he needs up front. Uh, and now Jacorian Bennett, I believe, is poised to help the entire secondary and allow Trayvon Morig to run around free, making interceptions like this. You know what, Doug? What I love is that this young man is developing and he's growing and he got another guy right next to him that is a senior leader that is the main communicator on defense right now that he's learning from. So he has nothing but growth and development left in front of him. Raider Nation, you should be excited to have a guy like this that is pumped up to play for you and he just continues to grow and develop. And talking about the guy that lines up next to him, 
the main communicator, the guy that has been putting all our secondary in the right position since this past season, Marcus Epps, brother. Marcus Epps excels in knowing alignment and assignment. With the deep level of understanding of the playbook now that he has because of all the continuity, because of all the chemistry that we have, he's able to put his teammates into correct positions and make them excel. And let's see what Coach Alexander has to say about Marcus Epps. You look at Marcus, um, even in Philadelphia, you couldn't get him off the field uh, last year. You couldn't get him off the field. Part of that's durability, obviously. But also, um, you just can't get, take him off the field because obviously he's doing what he's supposed to. What's his secret? What is What makes him such a player that is so invaluable out there on the people? He plays a clean game. And what I mean by that is, you know, he does – all the little things right. You know, first and foremost, having a really good understanding of what his responsibility is, um, where he's supposed to be, having an understanding of how to move out there on the field, um, getting his alignment and his teammates in positions to also do the things that they need to do. And that's what it comes down to being, you know, the primary role of a communicator. And so when you have that guy out there on the field as a coach, um, as a play caller with PG, like you trust that individual. You trust that individual not only to get himself um, and his teammates right and maybe even put – uh, us defensively in a better situation in regards to maybe some of the responsibilities we give him to audible out of certain plays and get us into other plays that we want to do from a game plan standpoint. And so when you have a guy like that out there on the field, it's really hard to take him off because you understand, you know, some of the value that he can give you that doesn't always reflect on a stat sheet. You know, there's just a lot of things that he can do very well that allows us to be the defense that we want to become. Right there, you heard Coach Alexander bring up that you have a general on the field, you know, somebody that can make uh, call audible, someone that's always communicating with the defense. And you will see that in these upcoming clips. You know, his numbers aren't flashy, as Coach Alexander said is also. But you know what? When you look at the tape on him, this guy is all over the field. And he's a general. And he brings the wood. No, absolutely, brother. And you said a couple key things with Marcus Epps. While his numbers might not reflect a great player, man, if you guys look at the film, it shows how knowledgeable, how fast, and how great Marcus Epps has really been playing for this Raiders defense, man. And now let's get into a play where he shows just how knowledgeable, courageous, and strong this man really is. All right, guys, and here we got the Raiders in a two deep man under. You got Marcus Epps playing the deep half of the field, highlighted. You got Trayvon Merritt playing the lower half of the field. You got corner one playing man on man with the receiver up top. You got corner two playing man on man with the receiver in the slot. And you got Corey Embedded playing man to man on the receiver on the bottom. And the quarterback snaps the ball. You see the running back going straight into the flat. You see Marcus Epps making a great read, getting a great beat on the play. You see the quarterback throws the ball into the flat, and you see Marcus Epps barreling down like a predator on his play, on his prey, and banging the quarter, running back for a great stop for the Raiders. Now we're on the All-22 view. You got Marcus Epps highlighted. There you got him communicating, letting the defense know what's going on. Sees the bump in motion. Quarterback snaps the ball. Immediately identifies where he's going with the ball. You see Marcus already has a beat on the ball and is barreling down on the running back, making a big time stop for our Las Vegas Raiders, baby. Epps is becoming my favorite safety in a long, long time, man. This guy, as I said, he's not very flashy on the stat sheet, but on the field, he's bringing it, man. You saw him point that play out before the snap of the ball and then make a beeline straight to the, the ball carrier and get lay some wood on him. He hit him pretty good right there, you know. That's the kind of safety that we need down in the box like that when Morg is over the top, intercepting stuff left and right. So, man, Epps, watch. He's not going to have flashy numbers maybe, but he's always, always 
going to be consistent and a leader on the field, communicating and getting everybody where they need to be. No, absolutely. And consistency is something that's key. Knowing where your player is going to be, knowing the way that he's going to react is something that coaches really need to be in tune with because guess what? We sit there, we make game plans, we make adjustments, and these guys have to know what they're doing, have to know what they're up to. And again, this is where coaches come in, and Coach Alexander's a heady guy. He's a guy that brings in knowledge into that room, and I'm sure he has those guys expanding on their playbook. Now, let's look into how we expect both Trayvon Merrick and Marcus Epps working together to stop completions for the Raiders. All right, guys, and here we got our Raiders in man-to-man defense. We got Marcus Epps highlighted in the middle of the field. See him? Yeah, you got Trayvon Merrick down below him, and he's covering the tight end. You got corner two down below, and he is covering his receiver down below. You got Nate Hobbs in the slot, and you got Corey and Bennett up top. And now, let's get into it quarterback snaps the ball identify as a receiver you see Marcus Epps play in the middle of the field watching the quarterback quarterback releases the ball Marcus Epps breaks on the ball and that's a bang bang play and we got a PBU for Marcus Epps here you got Marcus Epps on the all 22 view got him highlighted He's reading Josh Allen. Josh Allen is watching the field. He identifies an open receiver, loads up. In that short amount of time, you see Merrick come back across the field and lay some wood on Hardy to separate the football from the receiver. Bring in the wood. As I said, man, he's quickly becoming one of my favorite safeties in a Raider uniform, man. This guy is exactly what we need, man. That heady guy, that smart guy, capable of playing anywhere on the field, most likely, right, at least in the safety uh, positions, man. This guy is exactly what we needed on our team, man. You know, we talked about, you know, drafting and signing players and things like that, man. You know, we have a drafted player in Morag. We have a, a signed free agent in Epps that are really bringing this team along, man, coupling that that aspect and continuing to repeat that, the, the success, man, is what we have to do as a defense, man, uh, to continue to get better, to stay where we are, man, to not go back to becoming a mediocre defense, man. And players like Epps can help us stay in the well, – I think we, I believe we were top 15 so in some areas, so I believe we'll be in the top 10 this year with people or players like Epps. No, absolutely, brother. Marcus Epps, wood bringer, soul taker. Man amongst boys. That is something that we need in the middle. Intimidation. A guy that is going to bring that not that knowledge, that headiness, and, hey, he brings that physicalness. And Trayvon Merrick is another physical guy. So with these guys eliminating the middle of the field because of their physicality, it's going to be another thing that Patrick Graham can add to his defense. And now let's look into how Marcus Epps Stops the run, baby. Let's get into that breakdown. All right, guys, and here we got our Raiders in man-to-man defense. You got Marcus Epps highlighted. You got Trayvon Merrick above him. You got corner one. You got Nate Hobbs in the slot. And you got corner two down below. Now let's run through. You see here, Marcus Epps has obviously been studying this playbook. He sees something and he signals. Gets a beat on the play, reads the cross pull, fills the hole, and brings down Jameer Gibbs for a one-yard loss. Got here, we got the all-22 view. You got Marcus Epps highlighted. You see him moving around. He sees the alignment. He sees something. And then he communicates. Comes down, reads the cross pull, fills the hole. And brings down Jameer Gibbs for the pain, baby. Man, this guy's awareness is off the charts, man. 
He's pointing plays out before they even snap the ball consistently, it feels like, man. I just can't wait to watch more footage on this guy in the upcoming season, man, because we keep talking about extensions, right? This guy's definitely one of those guys we got to extend, man. He does not come off the field. He is ready to play for us. He's very heady. He is that intelligent player that we're looking for. I'm excited about Marcus Epps in the 2024 season. No, oh, absolutely, man. A player that's heady, a player that's smart, a player that's in his playbook, learning stuff, man. And obviously, like we said, alignment, assignment, know what's going on. He's engaged, man. He's a guy that is a general in that backfield. And when you're able to put yourself in prime positions like that and able to put other players in prime positions like that, it makes big-time plays in big-time situations like he just did. And, guys, let's look into another play where he makes a big-time play versus Joshua Dobbs. And, all right, guys, here we got the Raiders in cover three. We got... Marcus Epps highlighted right now. He'll play the lower, the lower flat. You'll have Trayvon Merrick play in the middle of the field. You got corner one playing the top one third of the field. You got Nate Hobbs in the slot that will cover the other flat. And you got our first appearance of Jack Jones covering the bottom deep third. And the ball is snapped. You see the guys go to their areas. You see Marcus Epps recognize the route combination and identify where the quarterback wants to go with the football. Joshua Dobbs loads up and Marcus Epps breaks on the football and makes a PBU at its highest point, baby. Here we got the all 22 view. You see Marcus Epps is already communicating, letting guys know what he sees and what's going on. The ball is snapped. See Joshua Dobbs drops back, identifies his receiver, loads up. Cranks out the pass, but you see Marcus Epps is already breaking on the football and meeting the receiver at his highest point. Making a big time play for the Raiders. Run stopper, pass defender. He's got it all, man. He's got all the tools needed to be a strong safety for us for years to come, man. Marcus has started 17 games, man, for us. Like I said, the numbers aren't flashy, but he played 91% of the snaps, man. He was targeted 36 times and only allowed one touchdown, man. Those are the kind of stingy stats that you do need. And then maybe it's not flashy, but it's consistent. And it's a leadership type role that he's playing that we expect from him anyway. So I believe that he is a great fit for the Raiders moving forward into the future. And Doug, you're right, man. You know, honestly, Marcus Epps being on the field 91% of the plays means that this guy is an absolute beast. I don't know how many players are able to do that, playing that high of a frequency, being on the field and being able to adapt and being able to adapt to all the personnel and make all those play calls. Marcus Epps is definitely a key player and a key component for the Raiders secondary for the next year. But as you know, safeties are only half of the secondary. So guys, we're going to get into our cornerback room. Guys, with that being said, there has been a key addition that has been brought on to the coaching staff. And unlike other coaches, Antonio Pierce has a different strategy on the way that he hires his assistants by allowing his defensive coordinator to hire his assistants and bring on the type of guys that he wants. So that way the player coach relationship can be further developed with the Raiders coaching staff and players. Let's get into that. Patrick, when new position coaches are added, a lot of coaches make that decision or general managers, but AP, wanted you in the process. What did you like about Ricky Manning that really stood out to you as a cornerback coach? Ricky, you know, he comes well, you know, respected in terms of his football knowledge, uh, his energy, and, you know, he played the position, you know, been fortunate. I, I like the fact that we've had DB coaches, you know, Jason Simmons, who's now at um, Washington, you know, guys that done it. You know, especially for me, who, you know, again, I'm, I've been more of a front guy my whole career. It's always a benefit for those players to have somebody that's done it, you know. And I think players gravitate to that, you know, just like they did the last two years. 
All right, so you heard them. Players gravitate to coaches that have experience and not just knowledge, but experience on the field. You know, this could be a great hiring for us, man. Manning Jr. comes full of energy and knowledge, as he's just been described. Uh, and, you know, he has that fire in him, man. As you pay attention to these interviews, man, he is excited to be a part of this organization. And he wants to utilize the talent that he has to help this defense get to the next level. No, absolutely, man. And I'm going to tell you what I like about Coach Manning. Coach Manning has guys in the locker room earning reps. He has a reps chart, not a depth chart. He has guys moving from one side of the field to the other. He has guys doing different things, which to me means he's a player developer. He doesn't sit here and pigeonhole a player and say, hey, this guy excels at this and this is the only thing he's going to do. This guy is molding complete players making guys earn it and let's get into that baby has the competition gone and higher than you might have thought even even now in otas oh uh, yeah because I didn't, I didn't even know you know i didn't know the guys as much right some of those guys I, I haven't even seen until i got here uh for the most part but yeah it definitely um better than i than i expected um i didn't have no expectations so i didn't know what to expect i remember jb uh, uh more than any of them um, but it's been going great, man. Guys are tuned in. They're competing. They're ready. Um, I, I, we have a rep chart in our room, not a depth chart, right? We got to earn it. We got to earn the right to be on a depth chart. So I'm moving guys around, guys with ones, with twos, with left side, right side, just really, uh, really diving into developing the guys. Um, and and, and as, as we develop, we're competing as well. Developing the guys, man. I love hearing that, man, especially for Jacorian Bennett. You heard that he had a little bit of knowledge on Jacorian Bennett, JB, as he said. Uh, so I think that bodes well. But, you know, Jack Jones, he's talking about left side, right side. Jack Jones has the potential, as Will and I were talking about in the green room, to be that type of cornerback that can go and follow a wide receiver. So we're definitely going to need Bennett to play either side too. So I think that uh, Manning Jr. is going to be able to get JB up to par and, again, utilize this defense or this secondary to help this defense become elite. You're absolutely correct, man. Manny Jr. definitely has his pulse on the guys, definitely knows what he's looking for when coming in. And a guy that has caught his eye is definitely Jack Jones. Because not only does this guy have all the physical tools on the field, but when he's locked in, he's definitely a player that can make a big-time impact on the Raiders' defense. Coach, what's your early impressions of uh, Jack Jones so far? Jack, Jack, man, Jack's a character, man. Lo love it. Hey, uh, <laughs> it's funny because I mean, my wife always discussing. He kind of, he, he kind of looked like Nick Cannon to me, you know. Like he, he is that, you know, what I'm saying like everybody loves Nick Cannon, right? Like so, Jack Jones is everybody loves him, you know. He, uh, he just a, he's a good, good character guy. He's hungry, um, uh, and but also he believes in in second chances and being able to be here and and with people that care about you. Um, so I think it's going to be a big year for him because of those things, right? Uh, uh, we're still working. We're still going. We're still grinding. That dude has some stuff in his legs that you just you just don't see. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm watching drills, and I'm like, he, he, he covered that five yards in, like, two steps. Like, you know what I mean? So he has some explosion stuff. Uh, uh, he's a ball guy, which, which I love. I love guys that take away the ball. Um, he, can, he, can, he can really do some special things. Uh, once he locks in and he focuses, that dude, that dude can be pretty good. So there you go, man. He is definitely excited about Jack Jones, as all of Raider Nation is, man, and should be, man. As you heard, he has that explosion. He has the capability of jumping the routes, man. He has the wherewithal to be a leader in the cornerback room. Uh, so Jack Jones is definitely one of the best signings that we've had that just came out of nowhere in the middle of the season. Or you know, So even though that was the case, he still had – he played in 56.3% of the plays – that were run or uh, ran when he was there, man. That's a guy that you know you can just throw him in there, and he's gonna be able he's gonna be able to produce, man. Uh, so I'm excited about him. I'm looking forward to see what he can do for this organization for years to come. Jack Jones is gonna be a crucial player for the Raiders for years to come because one, he doesn't command leadership; he literally works for it. AP brought in guys that are just like him. 
guys that got the short end of the stick, that work hard, that have talent, but just got the short end of the stick. And now, let's get into how Jack Jones' small sample size has made big time plays for our hungry Raiders. All right, guys, here we got the Raiders in cover three versus the Chargers four by one formation. You got Jack Jones on bottom covering deep third. You got Trayvon Merrick covering the deep third. You got Nate Hobbs lined up in the slot that will cover the lower flat. Then you got Marcus X inside corner number one. He'll cover the flats up top. And then you got corner number one that will cover the deep third. Now we got the quarterback that's going to send Austin Eckler in motion. Jack Jones has been studying the playbook. The Raiders knew that at four by one and Austin Eckler does a motion to reduce his split. That is a screenplay. Jack Jones high points the football for another Raiders highlight. And we got a Raiders pick six. Now let's go to the all 22 view. You got Austin Stick sending Austin Eckler in formation. You see him roll out to his right. Look at Eckler. Load up. Jack Jones is already there taking the bacon. And we got the Raiders pick six. That was Jack Jones' first pick six of the season. And it shows that he is a very smart player, man. You saw him jump that route, one-handed interception. Kind of reminded me of that Ronald Curry catch in the end zone a long time ago. But, you know, I haven't seen anything like that since then. I mean, this kid is flashy, man. He's smart. No wonder AP was pounding the table for this guy and was willing to put his neck out, you know, to get him on the team, man. And I'm glad that he did so because this guy, Jack Jones, Man, he has the potential to be an elite cornerback and become one of the greatest Raider cornerbacks of all time. Man, you right. Coach Manning said a lot of things right there, man, about Jack Jones. A guy that has a gift that if he stays locked in, this is a potential thing we can see on a weekly basis. Big-time playmakers big, make big-time plays in big-time situations. And Jack Jones is definitely one of those guys as we're going to see against here, against Patty Mahomes. And all right, guys, here we got the Raiders in cover three versus the Chiefs that are in a three-by-one formation. You got Jack Jones on top. He's supposed to cover the deep third. You got Nate Hobbs on bottom. He has the flats. You got Marcus Epps coming down, playing that hook curl zone. You got Trayvon Merrick playing that deep third. And you got corner one down, lined up, playing that deep third. Patrick Mahomes snaps the ball. As you see, he immediately identifies who he wants to throw the football to. Jack Jones is watching him. Breaks on the football. Makes a great play. And gives Patty Mahomes a stare down, letting him know that this is a no-go zone. Here we got the all-22 view. Patrick Mahomes snaps the ball. You see the play action, so that way they could suck the linebackers. Patrick Mahomes loaded up the ball. You see Jones has already undercut the route. Makes a great pick six, letting Patty Mahomes. That's a no-no. Anytime you can get in the face of Patrick Mahomes, I love it, man. <laughs> you know, that Christmas game even was a great win for us. You know, playing the Chiefs this year, you know, uh, was going to be a, an important thing, man. We don't want the Chiefs to three-peat, right? Uh, they've already tied us and went ahead of us as far as championships, man. So it's disappointing to see that. Now we need those Mahomes rules to really take, us to the next level when it, ver when it comes to playing Kansas City because I am sick of losing to Kansas City. If there's one team that I cannot stand, it is Kansas City. You know what I mean? And they, were, they won the Super Bowl on our field, man. So we have to put a stop to their dynasty and hopefully build our own dynasty. And you know what, Doug? You're right, man. Guys making big-time plays, doing stuff like that to Patrick Mahomes, a guy that's in our division, a guy that Definitely has been master of this decade. But our secondary stepping up, 
being young and our guys up front bringing pressure, making Patrick uncomfortable is what's going to make it. So that way we're able to take that AFC crown, baby. So let's get into how Jack Jones does against it. And all right, guys, here we got our Raiders defense in cover four. We got corner one up top. He will have the deep court. We got Chavon Merrick. He will have the seam, deep seam court. Marcus Epps will have the other deep seam court. And then you have Jack Jones covering the bottom of the field for his deep court with Nate Hobbs covering the middle of the field. Here we got Jack Jones backpedaling, looking at the formation, looking at the routes, and identifying that nobody is coming into his deep court. The quarterback has identified an open route as both safeties have been sucked up by the crossing route, and the scene has a double move. Jack Jones comes on a straight out hustle monster play all the way across the field to high point and get a PBU and get a big time play for our Raiders. Here we got the play for the all 22 view. You got Trayvon Merrick highlighted. They all drop back into their deep courts. You see Trayvon Merrick gets sucked up by the crossing route and the seam route is a double move. The quarterback identifies the play even though he has Max Crosby in his face. Throws the ball deep. And you got Jack Jones being an absolute beast, covering an absolutely ridiculous amount of ground, high pointing and getting that PBE. You know, we've already talked about awareness. So that's another example of great awareness on this field. Pride, poise, commitment to excellence. These guys are that. They represent the Raiders in the right way, the Raider way, man. Jack Jones, man, I cannot wait to see what he does this year with more reps. Uh, uh, one uh, The offseason under his belt, you know, being able to be there in the offseason and ask questions, get better, you know, throughout the, pre the offseason. And there's been a lot of reports coming out of OTAs that, you know, he was playing pretty well or very well. So Jack Jones, y'all expect him to do a hell of a lot this year. Absolutely, man. Jack Jones. I expect a big time leap, not only because of all the things that Doug just said, but because there's a coaching staff there that believes in you, that wants you to be a better man, a better person, not just on the field, but off of it. And I think that's what's going to be so crucial for Jack Jones' development. And guys, now with all the advancements in offense, there has been an advancement on defense and there has been key players that suit these key roles, okay? In a 4-3 defense, now you see the come up of the 4-2-5, okay? And the position of the star position. The star position is a hybrid outside safety linebacker that is a special creation that plays the slot. And we have a special player that is there that I love to talk about, that all I hope is that he stays healthy this year. And let's talk about the importance of Nate Hobbs to our defense. Has played all over the field, uh, you know, in his time with the Raiders. Uh, how invaluable is that to have a kind of a chess piece uh, out there uh, as, as, as that cornerback? Uh, Nate, Nate is the key that unlocks our defense, right? Um, that nickel spot is very special. That star spot is very special. And being able to play inside and outside is, is uh, a unique characteristic to have. Um, just like Michael Carter with the Jets were last year, you know, a, a pivotal piece to that defense. That's what Nate Hobbs is. That's what the, the, the star position has become. Um, he's a key to unlock our defense, and he, he's great at it, right? And he, he's going to continue to ascend. Uh, and, and with his growth, our defense grows, all right? Our defense grows and it allows uh, PG, our, our coordinator, to call certain things because he can trust that Nate can get it done and get it communicated to everybody, and we can work well together. So you just heard Coach Manning talk about Hobbs being the capable player, the key to the defense, the type of player that you can play inside and outside. And that's why I think he is going to start in the number two cornerback position and then move to the nickel with Jacorian Bennett taking the outside slot, man. This guy has been one of my favorite players on this team for a long time. 
I know I say that a lot, but I'm a Raiders fan. They're all my favorite in a way. But, you know, as far as a nickel cornerback, he's been one of my favorite players for a long time, man, because Hobbs, you know, he brings that grit, that grind. You know, he's he's good against the run. He's good in the pass coverage. You know, we were looking at plays from him earlier where he got the tip drill, uh, interception, you know. So, and his, this year's numbers weren't too flashy, but still you hear Coach Manning talking about him being the key to defense because it's not always about the numbers. The more and more film that we break down, the more and more hopefully you understand, if you don't know already, that there you can do so much more on the field while you're not stacking up the, the, the stats, right? His heady play is what makes him so valuable to this defense. No, you're absolutely right, man. And what Coach Manning just said there, he's absolutely correct. The star position, man, like I keep saying, if you guys know anything about defense, this is a defense that I actually run when I go coach in Europe, is I run a 4 two, 5 And that star position is your best player on the field. He's your most athletic. He's your top dog. He's a guy that can do a little bit of everything. And if you hear Manning say, hey, it's a gift to have a guy that can play inside and outside, that is an absolute truth, man. That is no understatement. Nate Hobbs is a key player, a guy that if he can stay healthy, will definitely be a superstar for the Raiders. And let's get into how Nate Hobbs fits into this defense. All right, guys, and here we got the Raiders in goal line defense, man to man. We've got corner two at the bottom. You got Nate Hobbs pointing out his responsibilities right now in the slot. You got Marcus Epps right above him. You got Trayvon Mary lined up up top. And then you got your and Bennett in man-to-man -man press versus the Bills. You got the quarterback sends the wide receiver in motion. See a return motion. You see Hobbs is not fooled, he knows his guy. He sees Knox coming across on that shallow slant. Quarterback loads up, throws the football, and Nate Hobbs is there to convert for the PBU with Trayvon May. Here we got the all 22 view guys. And this is the, all the key parts we're talking about. Merrick is here highlighted. You'll see Epps comes when the motion comes. Guys, there's a lot of movement, a lot of shifts. Communication is key. You see Epps coming across with the motion. Said, hey, Barrett, something might be going on. They bump, they're starting to bump over. The play goes. You see the return. You see Hobbs is sitting there. He's identifying. He's waiting to see what's going on. His receiver releases. He sees him there. He's there to make the play as the ball is coming in. And Trayvon Merrick comes in to help with that PBU. Teamwork, man. That's what it's going to take uh, to win a Super Bowl, right? You got to have a good team playing well together, man. When there was confusion on the field, that's a couple of plays already that we've looked at with confusion on the field, and our DBs are able to make a play and help this defense. That's what's putting us in a position as a team to win this year is having such a great defense, and it starts with plays like that, man. These guys are communicating all over the place, man, and they are not being fooled. Absolutely, Doug. And you know what? Communication, teamwork, chemistry, it's all important. It's important in the game. You guys, it's an important in the show. It's important at work. It's important at home. All the stuff that you just saw the Bills do. They did a shift at the beginning of the play. They brought a guy in motion. They did a return motion. All those little things are wrinkles that the offense does to confuse a defense. And Doug was bringing it up to me in the green room. Guys, look at the communication. Look at the guys being there, making the adjustments, making sure that they know what they're doing to complete the task. And that's why you saw Nate Hobbs and Trayvon Merrick make a combination play to make a stop for the Raiders defense. And let's get into another way that we see Nate Hobbs being an asset to the Raiders defense. And all right, guys, 
Here we got our Raiders in a zone coverage. You got Jacorian Bennett on the bottom, so he's going to cover that deep for Then you got Nate Hobbs highlighted right now in the slot. You got Marcus Epps playing deep over Nate Hobbs and Jacorian Bennett, as we expect to be done in this season to give Jacorian Bennett a little bit more help. Then you got Trayvon Merrick playing in the seat right above it. Then you got corner one playing that high side receiver. You got the quarterback snapping the ball. Nate Hobbs has been spying him, watching Josh Allen. Sees Josh Allen load up. Receiver catches the ball, but Nate Hobbs is there in combination with Jacorian Bennett to make a stop for a minimal gain with Spillane and Marcus Epps right there in pursuit. Here we got the all 22 view. You see Marcus Epps come into the screen. You see Josh Allen identifies the defense, loads up, and squares up, throws the football, and the Raiders identify not as the receiver and gang tackle him for a minimal gain of seven yards. You know, I, that's why I believe Jaquan Bennett will be the starter at cornerback, too. Uh, you know, he's got the size. He's got the speed. He's, he, he can tackle, as we're about to see in the open field. Uh, he just needs a little bit of help, man. He's young. You know, I was watching the tape, man. He was making good plays, but then the next play, he gave up a penalty, you know, 15 yards on a penalty. But that's normal for a rookie, man. These guys are really going at these rookies. And so he's going to have that kind of – he's going to make those kind of mistakes. But the thing is, is he keeps playing. And now this year, I think he's poised, and you can expect to see the Raiders' defense help him over the top and underneath like this play shows. Matt, I think it's crucial what you just said is having support around you when you first start. I know that when we first started, Doug, you know, we all have issues. We all have mistakes. We all have to learn through experience. Guys, Jacorian Bennett last year was a rookie drafted in the fourth round, and we expected him to come in and lock in number one receivers, guys, everything like that. Just doesn't happen overnight. We're talking about a guy that's going to, Benefit from having Hobbs underneath because Hobbs is an absolute monster. Now you have Epps, a guy that's a communicator, a knowledgeable guy to help you out and let you know what's going on. So I expect big time leaps from Jacorian Bennett with Nate Hobbs in combination. And guys, let's be real. Jacorian Bennett right now has been benefiting from getting reps sitting in the playbook with all these guys in the locker room. You got Hobbs, you got Epps, you got Trayvon Merrick. You got all these guys with experience pouring into you, giving you stuff, letting you know how to get better every single time and watching film and then being with the coaches this off season and learning and developing. And now let's get into how Jacorian Bennett's growth and development has been under Coach Graham. Uh, some of the younger uh, cornerbacks or and, and, and defensive backs, but Jacorian Bennett went mm -hmm. through that process last year, and there were some good, there were some struggles, uh, typical of a rookie player. Um, what did you see for, in terms of the growth for him and how it's kind of applied to, to where he is right now? Uh, part of it is just, you know, getting the reps. You got you got to see it, you know, until, you know, you, you have these dreams of being in the NFL. You know, you play co high school ball, play college ball, and you get here and you just realize it's, it's a different game. It just is. I mean, they're still tackling, blocking, you know, all that stuff right there, but it's a different game and seeing the route, route combinations, um, understanding that they're, they're going to try to isolate you for the run game, you know, with crack replace situations. So what I've seen is the film study. I've seen him ask the right questions. I've seen him narrow down what his focus is by stage. So phase one, phase two, phase three, and being able to really zero on that so he can improve his craft and then leading into training camp. Asking questions and watching film, man. There is no, there's nothing else you want to hear when it comes to your, your young players developing in this league, man. It starts with asking questions and watching film, man. That's why we're bringing this film to you as well. We're learning 
more about this team as we watch this film. And you can learn as much as you can from this team by watching film, man. But the great thing about Bennett, right, is that he does have that experience now. Even though he got injured a little bit in the middle of the season, he still bounced back and played well. And as we were talking about, he'll have help underneath, and he'll have help over the top, man. And this will give this kid room to grow, especially if Jack Jones is performing well and locking down one side of the field. Then our safeties aren't going to have to be as worried about that other side of the field, and they can help on Jacorian Bennett's side of the field. You're absolutely correct, brother. I mean, having Jacorian Bennett there developing, growing, and Becoming a player and coming into his own as a fourth round draft pick is absolutely crazy. I mean, like, guys, when you talk about a fourth round draft pick, you don't expect a guy to be an absolute playmaker or a starter at any time. It's going to be a role player, a guy that's a filler. Your first three draft picks, you expect those guys to come in and be starters and become, you know, something special. But Jacorian Bennett is coming into his own, and he's really, really going to benefit, like you said from having all that senior leadership around them. And let's get into how Jacorian Bennett fits into the Raiders defense. And all right, Raider Nation, here we got our Raiders in cover two. You got Jacorian Bennett up top covering the flats. You got Trayvon Merrick up top covering the top deep half. You got Marcus Epps on the bottom covering the bottom half. You got Nate Hobbs covering the seam, rock, the seam five yards deep. And you got corner number two covering the bottom flat. See the quarterback sends the tight end in motion. Ball snapped. It's a handoff. You see JB reads the run, takes on the wide receiver block, who olays the block. You see Jacorian Bennett comes up and fills the hole and makes a big time stop for our Vegas Raiders. Here we got Trayvon Merrick up top. You see the tight end come in motion. Ball is snapped. You see Tra JB reads the run, takes on the wide receiver block. Wide receiver O lays. You see the running back reads the gap. Jacorian Bennett comes and fills the gap and tackles Javante Williams for a minimal gain. I mean, this kid's performance, man, shows me that this team is going to be okay. That's why I believe they haven't signed Stefan Gilmore. You know, of course, they could be waiting for training camp to be over with so that they can pick up some of the guys that get cut. Uh, but I feel like they feel that Jacorian Bennett can handle the second cornerback position on the outside, man. You just saw him shed the block, identify the, the run, uh, get into the box, make a tackle. I mean, the kid has it all. He's just experienced. That's all he needed. And this year he's coming into year two, so I expect him to have the experience. No. Absolutely, man. Jacorian Bennett's going to be a key player that we need, so that way that he keeps growing and developing. What I see with Jacorian Bennett is a guy that needs to stay healthy and get repetitions. As long as he's healthy and gets repetitions, I mean, the kid's a monster in the run game. He's always there to support, always there to help out, and he's not scared to get physical. And let's see another way that Jacorian Bennett is going to be a great added piece to our Raiders defense this year. And all right, guys, here we got our Raiders in cover three. You got Jacorian Bennett down on the bottom, highlighted right now. You got Nate Hobbs in the slot. You got Marcus Epps playing the middle deep third. You got Trayvon Merrick up top. And you got corner one playing the top deep third. So here we got the ball is snapped. You got motion. Boston. JB reads the end man of line of scrimmage and triggers down from going from secondary force to primary force on this play. He fills the hole and makes a sure handed tackle for a key third down stop. Here we got the all 22 view. You'll see the motion. You see here, running back is being handed off the ball. He's already identified that Hobbs has been down blocked and caught in the wash. So he's gonna cut back. 
Cuts back outside. Jacorian Bennett is now in a one-on-one -on -one position. He has gone from secondary to primary force. If he doesn't make this tackle, guys, this will be a crucial first down versus the Broncos. So he comes up, makes a crucial one-on-one -on -one tackle, makes a key stop for the win. Right there is what Coach Graham was talking about, isolating him. Uh, they, in that play, isolated Jacorian Bennett, and that's what makes me feel a little more comfortable about him in the run game is that he was able to beat, you know, he was able to win on the outside in isolation. You know, that's a huge play. There's lots of green grass, you know, if he doesn't make that tackle. And it was definitely a first down. But making stops like that is what this defense really needs, man. And Jacorian Bennett is more than capable of doing it out there on an island all on his own. Man, all I got to say is we brought in a guy last year. I'm not going to name him. That wore one of our legends' numbers. He would have never made that play. Jacorian Bennett is an absolute asset for the Raiders' defense in the run game. He's there to support. He's there to make big-time plays and big-time plays in big-time situations. So that's another key reason, I think, also, that Jacorian Bennett's going to make big-time stops. So, guys, let's get into another play to see how he does in pass coverage. All right, guys, and here we got our Raiders defense in cover one. They're going to have Jacorian Bennett locked up on the receiver down at the bottom. You got Trayvon Mary playing deep middle field. You got Marcus Epps up top. You got Nate Hobbs, and you got corner one playing man-to-man. Now the quarterback snaps the ball. Sends the good wide receiver in motion. You see there, Jacorian Bennett is isolated man-to-man. -man. Receiver releases. Kenny Pickett thinks he has an easy completion. But you see Jacorian Bennett stride for stride and breaks back on the ball for a great PBU. Here we got the All-22 view. Here you got Trayvon there. We highlighted him to show you guys that he's going to be playing in the middle of the field for that middle side up. Then you got Kenny, Kenny Pickett sending the motion. You see the linebackers as well. Kenny Pickett identifies the one-on-one. -on -one. Thinks he has an easy completion, loads up, throws the football. Here you see JB sticking on him like glue, breaks on the ball for a great PBU for the race. Right there, that play, you know, you can expect that play this year to turn into an interception. You know, that's awareness. Again, we've been talking about our defensive backs having a good amount of awareness, you know, high IQs. He was there the whole way, out there on an island you know, and was able to stay with them and then play the ball at the highest point, man. So I believe this year that that's going to start turning into interceptions. That's another part of growth and development, man. Go ahead, taking that next step. What I see there is a guy that can play man-on-man -man coverage. A guy that if you take one second and you slip and you think you're going to take advantage of him if he's locked in, that he can play. And I'd be like, yeah, I know Kenny Pickett is not the greatest quarterback. But at the same time, I'm like, that play was designed to isolate him and to keep him one-on-one. -on -one. And he made an absolute big-time play. And if you look at that coverage, it was clean. It was sticky. He stepped on him. He was stride for stride with him. He was in that hip pocket. You can't ask anything more from a corner when it comes to coverage. And let's get one more look at our boy Jacoby and Bennett in coverage. And all right, guys, here we got our boy Jacory and Bennett in coverage. The Raiders are going to be in man to man coverage. You got Jacory and Bennett up top in press. You got Trayvon Merrick right next to him. You'll see him rotate guys with Marcus Epps, who's right below him. You got Nate Hobbs in the slot, and you got corner two on the bumper. You see, quarterback sends a tight end in motion. That rotates down Marcus, or Trayvon Murray, rotating over Marcus Axe. You see, Jacorian Bennett is impressed. He gets beat off the line. You see, Justin Herbert loads up, 
throws the ball. But JB is able to make up ground on a hanging football and make a great play to get a PBU versus those most hated Chargers. Here we got the All-22 view. Now we got Trayvon Merriger highlighted. We're gonna show you guys that he comes down and gets the man, the tight end man to man as he comes in motion. You see Trayvon, you see Marcus Epps is going to come into your screen here because they made the switch. They failed the switch and cover the middle of the field. Justin Herbert steps back, loads up, identifies the open receiver. Makes a throw, you see Bennett is beat, but then he puts those turbos on, covers up ground on a hanging football, and gets a PBU. Right there, man, he did not quit. He got beat off the press, man, but stuck with it. And I mean, he was out there again on an island. So when our safeties can't help him out, he is more than capable of taking care of his own, man. Uh, this kid right here, man, may save us even more money this year on the defense, man. If he can turn those defended passes into interceptions, uh, man, we are on par to be a top 10 defense if that's the case. Man, Doug, this is an exciting time of the year. And what excites me is that you know, when you look at a roster for a team, at this position, we have a lot of talent, a lot of youth. We might need to sprinkle in a little bit of experience, but I think we'll be just fine. But with players like Ja'Cory and Bennett, like Nate Hobbs, like Trayvon Murray, like Marcus Epps, like Jack Jones, the Raiders have a lot of potential in that one area of the field that people say, hey, there's a chink in our armor. Guys, Raider Nation, stay tuned because I'm telling you, we're going to have a ton load of highlights this season from our secondary making big-time plays in big-time situations with Patrick Graham, Manny, Coach Alexander pouring themselves into our secondary teaching our guys, giving them that experience to that youth, to that talent. The sky's the limit. We have super talented players. Yes, I know that two of them are going to be in contract years, and I'm sure we're going to take good care of them. Because Marcus Epps is a leader on the field, great communicator, and he's teaching our guys, and he's taking that leadership role. Trayvon Merrick now feels more confident looking at the coaching staff, looking at his personnel groupings, looking at the guys that they bring onto the field. That gives you a different type of swagger. Jack Jones now has found his family, has found the guys that he's willing to go to war with, guys that he looks in the locker room and he respects and he loves. We got Nate Hobbs, who's going to come into his own, that has come out on podcasts and he's like, yo, I'm going to show everybody what I can do this year. And a young man that's going to come into his own that nobody believes in. That has a bunch of support around him. That has all the talent in the world. And even Coach Alexander said, hey, I knew JB before. You know, he's the only one that I have experience with. So you know that he has a relationship with that young man. And when you're a coach, like Patrick Graham said, that is developing all these relationships with these players that shows these players love, respect, Doug, the sky's the limit. When you take talented players and talented coaches, man, I can't wait for the season to start. What are your thoughts, my brother? Uh, chemistry, right? That's what this team needs between the coaches and the players, that chemistry to really catch on so we can hit the ground running on week one, right? And I believe that will be developed in a uh, minute training camp, right? Uh, there was obviously enough chemistry uh in otas now we need to see it with some pads on right get our guys hitting a little bit get them comfortable and in football shape you know but yes the chemistry is what's going to be most important for this defense but the potential is there right 
Uh, these guys are ball hawks, right? Morig is a ball hawk, right? Epps is a tackle on the machine. Jack Jones is a ball hawk. Uh, Bennett showed that he can play the pass and the run. Dude, this secondary is set up. We still have face on. We still have whoever else we might sign, you know, in this in the rest of the offseason, man, after training camp cuts. So there's still a lot to be done, a lot to tinker with, as Coach Grams was saying. But as Coach Graham was saying, excuse me, but that – is there man that knowledge from our coaching staff and is going to be able to translate through the players or to the players because these players want that knowledge man they want these guys to help them succeed and excel and take the next step and you know there's reports coming out that players want to be the number one defense this year these guys are coming to play man i expect this secondary to be opportunistic and capitalize on the pressure that the front is going to put on the quarterback, man. You saw that a lot in these plays. Now imagine Kristen Wilkins in there destroying the middle of the field and the quarterback won't even be able to step up. So there's a lot coming down the pipe, guys, and I cannot wait to see how this coaching staff, you know, utilizes these players both inside, outside, moving around and tinkering with this great Raider roster. Absolutely. Raider Nation, stay tuned. Stay locked in. Make sure you guys click like, click subscribe, hit the little bell so that way it notifies you when we put out that new episode. And make sure that you guys comment and get locked in with Raider Nation. Guys, there's a bunch of new stuff that we got coming out for you. We will be out. We will be live. We will be doing things large and in charge. And just like Raider Nation, man, y'all guys stay tuned, stay locked in. It's all love. It's all about one team. It's all about one nation. It's all about the Raiders!